Give yourself a round of applause. All y'all look really good, man. Everybody nice. Man. All right. The reason why I came here tonight is real simple. Failure is simply a choice to stop operating. So thus, in part, there is no failure. And the reason why I say that is because all of you have an opportunity to have great success in whatever it is that you want to do. It doesn't matter where you come from or what you've been through or any, anything else in between. I'm sure a lot of your teachers and your staff can share with you stories of different things that they've been through. I myself have my own story. I stand before you today and I'm thankful just to see today. I was supposed to spend 135 years in prison, ladies and gentlemen. Thankfully, in part, I was able to get out after five, serve three. I come from that type of background. Before that, I was homeless all through high school. Football star, all of that good stuff. Had the opportunity to go to college, played at Ohio State. And there's one thing that I learned throughout the whole journey. After having to sleep up under freeway underpasses, doing different things, trying to get money so I can eat at night, and then later on still being able to play football, and then after having football take me to different heights, I found that I didn't have a belief inside of myself. I remember every game that I used to go into, I was scared to death. I'm about six foot six, about 285 right now. I used to be terrified. I wasn't scared of nobody else. I was scared that that day was going to be the day that everybody found out I wasn't as good as I thought I was or as, as good as they thought I was. I didn't believe in myself. That same belief is what caused me to make some really bad decisions. I, hang, I went around the wrong people, involved in gang life. I can't really say I was involved. I led a lot, some of that. And no matter how far football took me, in spite of my circumstances, I still had one foot in the street because I didn't believe it. I didn't believe it. I believed that one day something was going to happen and everything would fall apart the same way my home life did. Now some of you might come from that. You don't have to raise your hand or nothing like that. Maybe your background's a little different. But somewhere deep down inside of you, you lost a belief inside yourself. And I'm here to tell you today, failure isn't an option. You got to believe in yourself today, right now. Look yourself in the mirror and say, I'm going to believe in myself today. I can't fail. You got people around you that have designed an academy for your success. I want each and every one of you to give yourselves a round of applause because I knew you had to raise money to be here today. For me, that one foot in the street and then that one foot in football was all I knew. And even after leaving Ohio State and then having to go to a smaller university and finishing out my career there and then being invited to the NFL Combine, I still didn't believe. I didn't believe in me. It didn't matter what nobody else believed in. They told me how great I was. And on the outside, I'm like, yeah, I am pretty, I'm pretty awesome, man. I'm definitely better than y'all. You know what I mean? Any of that. But I didn't believe inwardly at all whatsoever. So what ended up happening was you stay involved in the street eventually. Eventually, just like at the end of all these movies, Scarface died. You know, whoever else went to prison, it only ends two ways. That's it. See the prison bars of the graveyard. And if you've been in prison, you might it's worse than dying. It's like being alive but dead at the same time. And I can't explain to you what that's like. I signed my AFL contract, that's Arena Football, for those that aren't familiar with the, the acronym. Arena Football League contract in 2005, October. My contract was scheduled to take 
hold in March of 2006 on the 13th. Can anybody in here tell me how many days are in the month of February? I can't hear you. 28 days in February. I got locked up February 21st of 2006 and was facing more time in prison than I had been on this earth. To be truthful, I was 23, so about five times as much time in prison than I was on this earth. And the reason why I got it is because I would be what's considered a jack boy. I robbed dope dealers. That's where I come from. I don't have a whole lot of time to go too far deep into it, but that's who stands in front of you. The same guy that walked through those prison doors, three years later walks out. And I had a belief inside of myself that to this day, my father and my mother cannot explain because they didn't believe. I remember going in and my father's like, if you're able to get out at any point, son, it's going to be impossible. We'll do everything we can for you, but it's going to be impossible for you to get a job. Here I am today, the senior store manager of the only million dollar store in Jacksonville. And I say that with pride because it took a lot of belief. It took a lot of long walks from one side of y'all city to the other. And Lord knows it takes 30 minutes by car, so on foot it takes a few hours. To have that happen for me, it took everything inside of me to believe it and build it. And that's what I came here to talk to you guys about tonight. There was a movie, how many of you guys ever watched Star Wars? Got a few of them. I know a few of y'all might be trackies, <laughs> but for the most part, we've seen Star Wars. When it comes to Star Wars, you had uh, Yoda, who was like the guru. Am I right? All right. So in this particular, I just saw it the other day, so bear with me. But it hit my spirit in a certain kind of way, and I was like, oh, this, this is it. Luke was training with Yoda out in the field trying to learn how to use the Force. Right? The Force is basically his belief in the ability to do whatever it is that he so chooses. So he's training with Yoda, he's, he's hovering upside down, Yoda's on his foot. It was weird because he's a little gray man with big ears, it was kind of crazy. But either way, he's hovering, and the little robot guy, uh, R2-D2, R2-D2? Alright, he's over there, he's making all the little mechanical noises, and Luke starts paying attention to R2-D2. And when he does it, it breaks his focus, and everything falls. He falls, Yoda falls, everything falls apart. Right? So with that, Yoda's like, concentrate. Believe in yourself. Believe in the force that's within you. Believe in the force. And that's what I want you guys to do tonight. Start believing in yourselves. Believing in the people that surround you is only going to take you so far because for every one or two people you have that tell you that you're great, the only person that establishes that is you. They can tell you that you are the best thing since sliced bread, but if you don't have any value in yourself, ladies and gentlemen, there's things that you'll do that don't necessarily line up with what it is that you're supposed to do. So with that, Luke stands up, he dusts himself off. They had the X-Wing, which was like sinking in the water. I don't know how it happened, but it happened. I think I missed that part of the movie. But it was... It crashed? It crashed. It crashed. So it was in the water. It's sinking. Luke stands up and tries to use the force. He's like, ah, right? And it sinks lower. It goes down. It's completely underwater now. And he's like, this is impossible. You want me to do the impossible? It's just too big. It's too big. I can't lift it back out. Little green man is like, believe it's believe in size, do you? It's the size that's the problem. You always telling me what it is that you can't do. And if you believe it's the size, then I guess I must be pretty weak too then because I'm smaller than you are. But he was like, the strongest asset that I have is my belief, is the force. The force is the energy within you that's all around you that allows you to do whatever it is that you want to do. And so with that, he's like, 
It's different. It's not like stacking rocks on top of each other. This is different. The X-Wing is underwater. It ain't coming back. He walks away, completely throws a temper tantrum. You know, you know how you gotta do. Y'all teenagers, right? Mom and dad didn't do something you ain't like, oh, I'm moving out, I'm out of here. It ain't but three years time 18 anyway. That. He walks away. And when he does it, the little green man gets up. And he don't even stick his hand out. He ain't even do all Luke did. Luke like this. Yoda just stood there. He like closed his eyes and he raises the X-Wing back out of the water after being completely submerged. Not only did he raise it up, he brought it to the shore and sat it down. He did what he said was absolutely impossible. And he walks back, he walks around the plane, he's looking at the plane, I imagine inside of his head, he's like, this ain't the real plane, it's, it's a different plane and I might be seeing things, I don't know. But he was like, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. And Yoda said, that's why you failed. You see, the reason why he failed isn't because he couldn't lift the plane. He didn't allow his belief to allow him to continue to operate. You are going to encounter some things in life that's going to make you want to stop operating. You are going to come across some hurdles that seem like it's a little bit too much. You're going to be in class and the teachers are going to ask things of you that you feel like you can't accomplish. But I'm going to ask you then to believe in yourself now. Right now. Ain't nothing too big or too small for you to achieve. And I say that to you because anything that I set forth to do, any belief I have, belief is simply a trust in an assertion or truth for you. I'm asking you today to assert yourself as to what it is that you want to do in life. I don't care where you come from. It doesn't matter. There ain't nothing too big. There's no situation that's too broken. And it doesn't matter if you're the first one to do it and everybody else tells you it's impossible. It matters what you say. So I'm going to need you to do three things for me tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Number one, let's use the force. Or let's use our belief. Like I told you, a belief is simply a trust in an assertion or a truth. If you want to build a business, then build it. You want to go to the military and you want to be high ranking, Go, do it. You want to be a millionaire, figure out how much money you got to make per day in order to make a million dollars in a year. Number two, don't try. Do not try. Either you do or you don't, but there ain't no sense in trying. Anybody tell you they try, they usually don't do it, am I right? Like I'll try to be there tomorrow. And then you look up tomorrow and they ain't came and be like, well, I told you I'd try. Stop trying. Don't try to ace the test. Study until you ace the test. Don't try to get into college. Do the things that are necessary to get you into college. Don't try to come to school on time. Get yourself, set your clock five minutes ahead. So this way everywhere you go, you're five minutes early. Don't try to keep your pants up, gentlemen. Walk around with a belt on. The small things that matter, man. And if I can do it, I know each one of you can. Because I ain't nothing special. By a long shot. And I come to you today, not so this way you can be like, oh, well, you know, he said, uh, and such and such and so and so, and, and that's, that's great. I walked that road already. I took the long way around already. And I'm telling you now, it ain't the way you want to go. To walk through a door and to see wires and chain link fencing all across the top. Imagine from where you're sitting right now that you were to look up and up here is another tier. And there's chain link fence that wrap around the whole thing. And the reality sets in for you that they ain't up there playing basketball. People being thrown off the top tiers of the, of the thing. And I gotta live here. It, 
It don't matter what your situation is right now. Acknowledge what you've done to get to this moment. Believe in yourself to go forward and to make a plan. I don't care what the goal is. I don't care how unrealistic the goal is when they tell you how unrealistic the goal is. You establish whether or not this is true. Don't wait for nobody else. You got your teachers. They're going to tell you that you can do a, a hundred million different things. But you got to believe. And then once you believe it, once you get it down inside of you that you believe it, you got to build that thing. And it's going to take work. It's going to take the long nights of walking by yourself because your friends ain't going to go with you. You'll have some. They'll love you from afar. Oh, you still, you still chasing that music thing. Oh, 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 all right. Oh, you still trying to go to college. Don't you got C's in all your classes? You're not, they might not come with you. And they're not supposed to. But that don't mean lose your belief. Day after day, Moment after moment, doing the little things day by day, catching the little mistakes that you're going to make along the way. There's going to be a day where you forget your belt. There's going to be a day where you don't have everything that you're supposed to have. But when you make that mistake, instead of getting down on yourself, instead of losing belief, just decide you won't make that same mistake twice. I told myself in 2006 I would never make the same mistake twice if I got the chance to ever see the free world. If I got the chance to ever hold my child again. And the moment they cracked that gate, I made plenty of mistakes. I moved here to Florida. I was still getting called back to Ohio for questions. Made a ton of mistakes. But I decided I would never make the same one twice. So if one thing I did caused me to, to be in a precarious situation, I never did that again. If I know I didn't bring my pencil to class and I couldn't do my work and I got it incomplete, I made sure I kept pencils in my pocket. Even if that meant when I did laundry, I had lead everywhere. <laughs> See what I'm saying? It's all about your belief inside of yourself. And whatever it is that you believe on, whatever it is that you believe in, you can build. That's why when I'm walking around, I'm walking around with pride. When I met uh, the dean of students, he'll tell you himself, I was like, yes, I am the senior store manager of the only million dollar store in Jacksonville. I say that with pride because nobody else has my record. I wasn't supposed to be employable. Yet that's what I earned. That's what my belief was. That when I started out as a part-timer, and I was making minimum wage, that I would stay late, <coughs> excuse me, excuse me, come in early and sell as if my life depended on it, because it did. I didn't have nothing when I moved down here. That little bit of belief that I could do something, and I didn't allow nobody to tell me different, is what allowed me to stand here today and be considered a success enough to be invited to talk to you. Whatever it is that you want to do, ladies and gentlemen, I ask you to do three things. Believe in yourself. Don't ever try. Just do. Last, last but not least, remember that there is no failure. There's just adjustments. Adjust along the way. Failure is when you decide to stop operating. Pretty sure that's my time. I thank you. You guys have a great night.